and students, Republicans and Democrats, farmers and scientists, tradesmen and lawyers. The association has a small office on the river in Georgetown, a dedicated staff of five people and a vote. In 2013, the Sassafras River Association will be using over $1 million of funding on restoration projects in Cecil County, reducing sediment and nutrient discharge to the water. We have a history of working constructively and collaboratively with our partners to protect the river. <clears throat> the revised tier map submitted in December 2012 came as a shock because of the radical change from the draft tier map sent to citizens on August 27, 2012. The new map drastically alters the southern regional residential zone established to prevent, quote, premature urbanization in areas where public facilities can only meet rural needs. Tier three designations from the canal to the northern bank of the river are a giant step backward. The official tier map needs to sensibly protect the entire Sassafras watershed and the submitted map simply does not. Let me clarify the SRA concern. <clears throat> the Sassafras River is important to the life and vitality of Cecil and Kent County residents and visitors. It provides enjoyment, recreation, employment, and beauty. As one of our members stated, when you observe the license plates on cars in the summer and fall, you realize the river is loved by others and draws visitors and money to the Cecil County economy. But the Sassafras River, as well as the Bohemia, Elk, and Northeast Rivers are correctly designated as impaired waterways. Now these tributaries, rivers, and bays can't complain, they can't speak, they can't vote, but they are affected by their surroundings. They don't know where the insult and injury are coming from, airborne contamination from coal-fired power plants, debris from a derecho, hurricane, or the open gates of the Conowingo Dam. They don't know if sediments coming from Kent County or Cecil County. They don't know if excess nutrients are coming from industry, residential lawns, family farms, or concentrated animal feeding operations. The river doesn't know how well or poorly human waste is handled by boats, marinas, residential septic systems, or municipal wastewater treatment plants. But we and you, as concerned human caretakers, do know that all the sources of pollution all add up, and we must use and adopt the best technology, management practices, legislation, and zoning to protect this precious river. Like the Giving Tree, the Shell Silverstein Children's Book, the river continues to unselfishly give and give, but it can't absorb punches forever. Rivers and lakes can die, which was my personal observation in Ohio. With Lake Erie and Cuyahoga River, the river that literally burned. The Sassafras River Association was formed in 2004. We monitor water quality throughout the year. We work with government, industry, agriculture, schools, landowners, boaters, and marinas on programs and projects to educate the citizens, restore the river to health. We're for the river. We're against pollution, we value cooperation, and we genuinely dislike confrontations. We thank Cecil County for past cooperation and commitment. We look forward to joint efforts to meet the mandated total maximum daily load standards. We look for sensible paths through arduous permitting processes. And we look for a modified, thoughtful Cecil County tier map, such as the one sent out on August 27th that protects the river. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Next to you, please. Ruth Price. Good evening. My name is Ruth Price. I live in Northeast on McKinney, McKinney Town Road. I am a private property owner. I do not have a farm. My husband and I bought the property approximately 20 years ago. We bought it as a long-term investment and hopefully a legacy for our children. However, times have changed drastically since the 20 years ago when things were a lot better in our country. Things have changed drastically. Hopefully my husband and I will never have to sell our property. But if we do, I feel that we should have the right to be able to sell the property 
and to get the money that we have invested over that 20 years in that property. Nobody, including Governor O'Malley, has paid my taxes or paid my mortgage. I have put two children through school. My husband and I are productive members of this community. My husband worked for 37 and a half years a very demanding job to be able to afford the property and to be able to live there. He retired. He now gives back to the community by driving a school bus for Cecil County, which is not an easy job by any stretch of the imagination, but he wanted to do something to give back to the community. We are very community oriented, but I do not believe that anybody has the right to tell us what we can do with our property that we bought 20 years ago. Had we known this was going to be what happened 20 years ago, maybe we would have made the decision not to purchase the property, but we did not know that. We don't belong to any groups. We don't belong to any associations. We are private property owners, and I don't feel that it is fair that the government make a decision on what we can do with our property if the need arises that we need to sell that property to sustain our lives. God forbid one of us should get sick. My husband has been diagnosed with cancer. Hopefully we will not be able or not have to sell that property to be able to afford his treatments. But again, if I do have to sell that property so that my husband can get the treatment that he needs for his cancer, I don't believe that Governor O'Malley or anybody in this state has the right to tell me that I can't sell the property and that it can't be developed. Thank you very much. Don Moore. Good evening. My name is Don Moore. I was born and raised and still reside on my family farm in northern Cecil County. I'm the third generation of my family on this farm. And as a side note, we have no aspirations to develop our farm. First off, I want to applaud our county executive and the members of the county council for their hard work leading up to and the selection of the version of the map that was submitted to the state. I understand it's not perfect, but we had to start somewhere. I have been and continue to be opposed Senate Bill 236. I hear the argument that it will clean up the bay. My response to this is, if you're serious about cleaning up the bay, in my opinion, we need to fix two things. Number one, municipal treatment plants. It seems as though hearing about large spills and discharges has become almost routine. Number two, the sediment and the nutrients entering the bay from the Susquehanna River. I also hear that this will curb development and preserve farmland. Now, I'm in favor of that but we already have a program that does this and does a great job at it. The Maryland Ag Land Preservation Foundation is a voluntary program where landowners can choose to extinguish their development rights in exchange for some sort of compensation. It works. To date, over a quarter of a million acres are under easement in the state of Maryland. Farmers want to preserve their land. Dozens of farmers remain on a waiting list. If you want land preserved, impress to our legislators to fund the program and find funds within the county to match state funds like some other counties are doing. <laughs> Infringing on farmers' property rights is not the answer. It devalues farmland and erodes equity. This hinders a farmer's ability to borrow money for operating loans and equipment purchases. Once all of my aforementioned items have been addressed, then I think it's time to talk. But until then, I feel as though Maryland and Cecil County farmers have done their fair share and then some. Thank you. Lee Bosters. I'm Lee Bosters from Chesapeake City, Maryland. I'm a farmer. Um, I would like to concur with several of the people that have spoken before me. Um, Wayne Gilchrist, Sue Furman, Phyllis and Bill Kilby, Ron Hartman, Ken Schumacher, um, and others. Council, you do not have to look any further than behind you on the wall, the seal of Cecil County, which depicts the waterways and the wildlife that are so intrinsic to this county. Um, they lace it and they have provided much 
enrichment for people that live in or near or by those waterways. And of course, they contribute to the bank. And it is our responsibility, the state's responsibility, as well as the county's, to maintain the integrity of the municipal um, septic systems. And if that's not done, and these rivers continue to deteriorate, there will be a, you know, a significant problem. But we have a greater responsibility here to preserve our land for future generations and not to make the developmental mistakes of the past or neighboring states. We really need to honor the results of the comprehensive plan. That was an extensive body of work done by many people, qualified and a cross-section as has been um, indicated before. And it respects our agricultural heritage and it preserves our rural legacy for future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Joel Potter. Joel Potter. I'm Joel Potter. I live in Warden. Uh, I'm a grandparent to um, children who eventually will live on a farm that uh, is presently owned by the Howard family. I support the words, uh, wise words of the Vosters. I come from with a somewhat different uh, angle on looking at all of this. I spent uh, most of my years in New Hampshire and was a member of the Concord Conservation Commission for many, many years in that state. Many of the similar goals that they have up there, you people have here. Although certainly um, the dilemmas of water pollution is uh, certainly something that uh, is an ongoing phenomenon that we all have to consider. I support the um, words that uh, are in the SRA uh, watershed announcement about this meeting that uh, they certainly import and want to uh, improve upon uh, the protections for open space, rural areas, and conservation areas, and minimize development and maximize water quality. Thank you for this opportunity to have an open discussion. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Harlan C. Wills Williams. Harlan C. Harley Williams. Glenn Farms, Cicero County. We've all heard things tonight about the preservation of farmland and what's good for Cicero County. Uh, I think our administrators sent a map down. It's not necessarily the final map that we want, but it's our map. It should be our map. We're talking about a tier system. I want to talk a little bit about tier government. What if I was here tonight, a representative from the federal government and said to the state, we are taking over all planning of the states. It would go over real well, that Annapolis with them. Well, that's what's happening here the other way around. They're trying to tear down to our job. I think that's down to a very significant point that I've been trying to talk about for a long time, and that's Article 66B is very clear about giving the authority to the counties to create and they must create their own zoning planning commission and so forth. We've been talking tonight about our group to put a lot of time and effort into a plan that we adopted. And it's our plan. I didn't agree with everything in that plan, but I did agree that it's our plan, the county plan. My request to you, ladies and gentlemen, is to look deeper and deeper into the legality of 236 in reference to Article 66B. I think it's a little. And I think it could go from the state courts to the federal courts, the United States Supreme Court, that this is an absolutely wrong definition of what the state's trying to do. They have no authority, no authority that I can see in 66B. And 66B was not rescinded in my 
study, and when you look at Planned Maryland, I've read the Planned Maryland three times, and incidentally, <clears throat> it talks about soils going out, I mean, not, no, effluent going out into our streams through the soils. Does the state realize that our water systems in the cities are filtered through soil, sands, and it takes out what people should not drink? And they're worried about the septic systems. A well-controlled septic system does not hurt. This has been talked about already tonight, so I'm not going to go more into that. And anybody has a bad one should be punished. It should be fine. It should be made to correct it. But the thing I want to leave you with and plead you with is to get legal advice now. The seven counties and the rural counties get together and get the best attorney you can find and look into this legal matter of 66B being the law that we govern but will govern us, not 236. Thank you. George Kaplan. Good evening. My name is George Kaplan. I live at 35 Oak Street in Cora. Um, I ask you tonight to carefully consider the comments made by MDP in their letter and to revise the county's clear map accordingly. Many of the comments made by MDP reflect the same issues that I and others raised to the county commissioners last summer when tier maps were first being considered. Especially in regard to tier four, the law's requirements are not difficult to understand in the context of Cecil County, and what needs to be done is clear. As public officials, each of you took an oath not long ago to support the Constitution and laws of the state of Maryland. SB 236 is one of those laws, like it or not. None of us gets to pick and choose which laws we will follow. The county must change its tier map. Fortunately, you don't have to start from scratch. A good place to begin new discussions is map four from last summer. I believe it conforms in large part to both the law and our comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is more than just the basis for our zoning workings. In chapter 11, it urges that specific policies and practices be adopted to make the plan work, collectively called growth management. Apparently, few people in leadership positions in the county have read that far, because in the past three years, not much has been done to implement the actions suggested in that chapter. So as the national economy and the local real estate market ramp up, we could again find ourselves where we were just a few years ago, with large housing developments popping up everywhere in the county and splitting up our agricultural areas. That would be a bad thing for the county and our local water quality, and the provisions of SB 236 can help us do what we say in the comprehensive plan is important to us. The comprehensive plan is very explicit about the need to protect agriculture in the rural areas from further residential development. Right now, about 25% of the land in the rural areas in the northern part of the county is already developed, and somewhat less than that in the south. Since new large-scale developments in these places do not pay for themselves, and since we do not impose impact fees on them as other counties do, all county taxpayers end up paying for the county's infrastructure and services that are needed to support these projects. If we really want to keep future taxes low, the best policy is to keep our rural areas in agriculture, and a properly drawn tier map will help do that. Furthermore, such a map will limit future increases in groundwater nitrogen, as other people have, have uh, tonight stated. And I should mention that the effect is mainly through groundwater. It's not through the surface water. Um, uh, a failing septic system will affect surface water, but even a well-maintained septic system, as I have, uh, negatively affects the groundwater, which eventually works its way into the bay. That's the way they work. It's well known, it's been scientifically studied, that's the fact. Nevertheless, um, as we uh, did here on September 4th, I think this law does have some unintended consequences for uh, small subdivisions and family subdivisions. Um, ironically, if last year there had been less fo focus on flouting the law, 
we could have actually taken actions under the law to address those concerns, as was done in other counties. I think there are still some adjustments that can be made in our subdivision regulations <coughs> to deal with the problems that were mentioned in regard to family <coughs> subdivisions and such. And I ask you to work cooperatively with MDP to resolve them. Fortunately, there is still time to do the right thing. I'm encouraged by the county executive's proposal for a collaborative approach to resolving these issues. I hope that someone will be included in that uh, who understands the scientific basis for, for the SB 236 septic restrictions, um, possibly uh, Mr. Duke. I ask you to work within the law to protect the environment, support the comprehensive plan, and move the county forward in cooperation with the state. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. C. H. Herzog. Good evening. Uh, my name is Charles Herzog. I uh, have the farms uh, known as Stony Valley Farm in Kalora, Maryland. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I don't have prepared uh, uh, speech for you tonight, but I have some observations over the last hour and a half to two hours. First of all, I certainly wish for our future and everyone in this room that the county executive and the county council can work with Department of Planning, Rich Hall and his staff to get a proper tier map that will work with the comprehensive plan. Everyone in this room, the 41 members that work diligently on that comprehensive plan, we all agree on it. <clears throat> Growth should be in a certain corridor. We like to preserve our rural character. I don't think there's anyone in this room that disagrees with that. I think probably the folks down in Annapolis agree with that. We have to come Excuse up with me. Don't assume that everybody in this room Excuse me. Agrees Excuse me. With you. No. <laughs> Speak to the council. Yes, Mr. President. Um, the, the thought that I had just skipped out of my mind, but um, <laughs> we would like to have a consensus that if the law of SB, uh, SB 236 is the law of the land and will not be overturned, and Rich Hall alluded to that, that we have to abide by that law. We're a state of laws, and we have to abide by it. We may not agree with it, but it is the law. So I <coughs> urge the council, I urge the county executive to give uh, and take uh, Mr. Hall's opportunity to work together as a consensus and give a proper tier map that's reflective of our comprehensive plan that <coughs> all of us may not love but we can live with it. So I urge you to do that. I also wanted to, to thank several great speakers, uh, Ken Wiggins, Ed Karens, um, Phyllis um, Kilby, and Bill Kilby. Um, Wayne Stafford made a lot of great points. Um, I agree with George Kaplan that the closest <laughs> tier map, for those of you that were there last August, I believe map four, if you could look at map four again, I think that represents exactly what our comprehensive plan is. And hopefully Mr. Hall will say that's perfect for us and we can move on. The one thing that uh, I wanted to make a correction, and a lot of people, there's some false information that's speaker after speaker is saying. I, I don't think Annapolis or other places, in my opinion, it's not a land grab. I, mean, I don't believe it is. If you don't believe it is, that's fine. I don't believe it is. However, one thing that's very poignant that a lot of people don't understand that I wish someone would address, that under the law of SB 236, it only affects major subdivisions. I have a farm. I have two boys. If I want to build a lot on that land, and it's within the permittable zoning, I can build a lot. It does not affect, SB 236 does not affect minor subdivisions. So if you have a legacy for your child, your ch grandchildren, you can build on your property. And that's a misnomer that a lot of people are missing here today. So it's a very important point. I also plead with the council for future to use of TDR, TDRs to compensate farmers for, in essence, a down zoning that may occur uh, due to uh, being, their farm being in tier four. I, I'm in Mouth. I've been in Mouth for 12 years. 
I'm one of those farmers that are fighting for, I'd love to get uh, compensated. If I don't, um, I still, I will never develop my farm. Um, as most farmers know that the, the beauty of their land is, is, is that soil and they won't develop that land. They like to be compensated for it and I understand that. Anyway, in closing, I just urge the people from Annapolis that have worked hard, the people, our council and our county executive to work together to make a plan that everyone can live with and it will work for our grandchildren to protect the bay. And that's what this is all about. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Joe Martins.
Thank you. Next speaker, please. Jim Burr. Jim Burr. Our next speaker, please. Nancy Valentine. Oh, it's Jim Bell now. Jill. Jill or Jim? Jill. That's actually Jill, because I was going to try to That's okay. Um, <clears throat> good evening. I just want to say a few things. I really support choosing a map that reflects our comprehensive plan. I agree with uh, Ed Carnes and uh, Charles Herzog and George Kaplan. And uh, all the work that went into that plan, the county, the people from all over the county, from all different walks of life, the landowners, developers, everybody put this together. And I think that that reflects Cecil County. Um, and the tier map four, I believe, reflects that the best. But tier map 10 doesn't. So I just wanted to urge you to choose a map that does reflect the comprehensive plan. Um, two other things, the tier map, I don't think that people understand it can be revised. Just as we revise our comprehensive plan every so often, I think it's every 10, 20 years, depending on where you are, then the tier maps can be reflect, can be revised to reflect that. And that the, the tier maps don't necessarily take away your right to do things with your land. It reflects your comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan and the zoning rights restrict our rights to do what we want. I can't just put up an office building on my back acres. You know, I have to go by those, the zoning and the comprehensive plan. So I think those are important things to uh, understand and know and, um, when you go to uh, create an actual tier map. The other thing is the, uh, the transfer of development rights, and I see that um, there's a purchase of development rights bill that's on the uh, agenda for the evening. And I think if we can kickstart this transfer of development rights, the people that are in here that are so worried about their retirement and having money, and I understand that, you know, for their 50 or 70 acres, then um, if someone purchases the development rights, then they will have that money if they're up in the northern agricultural region or, region or in the southern agricultural region, then they can purchase the development rights and the, the uh, farmers and the landowners can have that money. So I think it's a, an uh, excellent way to kickstart the uh, whole thing that, to get get the whole thing going and hopefully to have a tier map that reflects how it's comprehensive thing. That's all I think I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. N uh, next speaker. Nancy Valentine. <coughs> well, Nancy Valentine from Northeast Maryland. Um, I'm happy to have another opportunity to speak on this, but I'm going to keep it as short because I think everyone's getting tired. Um, you've already heard concern about our impaired rivers. You've uh, heard about the value of the farm land, the soil itself, and um, the importance of preservation. You've heard ideas uh, about thinking about how we handle people in Tier 4 who might think they don't have an option, and there may be some, as Mr. Kaplan mentioned. You've heard about um, Frederick County, who's kind of working out some of their issues and coming to a map that makes sense for the law and for them, which is a great way we want to get to. Uh, what I want to add now are some of the specifics that make a more compliant tiers map critical to the county. We have a comprehensive plan that's fairly balanced approach to preserving farmland and promoting the growth corridor. All of our key actions to make that plan a reality need a firm handshake between our state agencies doing permitting <coughs> and our own local subdivision rules in everything involved in county government. For example, desirable development in our designated growth corridor requires Maryland Department of the Environment to approve water, master water and sewer amendments. Our upgrade to the Northeast River wastewater treatment plant doesn't require just approval, but also is looking for state funds to help make that happen. Our upgraded, um, we've got that one. Um, there's even a talk of improved rail service, and that is many layers of government, and we need to work with all of them to make that happen. <coughs> Continued farm preservation requires that we set aside some land that we say we're going to go into preservation, or we don't get the money to do that. 
Even our county health department is a state agency, and they're the ones who approve septics. We need to think about this in terms of how we work together on this. We are linked with and dependent on our relationships with the state that we are part of. Given the importance to the county of various state agencies and the importance to citizens that our well-planned growth, uh, that our well-planned growth gets the infrastructure to support it, is one of the things we need to see. I see a glimmer of hope right now because of the discussion about a collaborative process, which I'm glad to hear about, that we will be able to create a tiers map that both honors the planning intent of the comprehensive plan and the law that we're re responding to. The map that we should starting, be starting with is the land use element map of the comprehensive plan and the water element, water and sewer plan that we have in place, and that's the beginning point for it. And the tier four, I mean not tier four, but map four from last summer was very close to that. There have been many people expressing interest in assisting in collaboration. Uh, ideas have been suggested. I hope that they'll be called on in working in that process. I don't know if it's been defined yet, but certainly that would be to the advantage of all people in the county. Please listen to these voices and develop and submit a map that recognizes our responsibility for clean water and honors the growth and preservation intent of the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Joe Carabetta. Joe Carabetta. Good evening. Joe Carabetta, Perryville. You got a tough task. And, what, and I, first of all, I'm against this because it takes away from the local control of our land use. But we as a county, you as a council, our county executive, need to make common sense uh, decisions and, and actions. Actions are very important. It's actions, not just talk actions. And there's some common sense things that can be done. If we're really going to improve water quality, Everybody in here gets a bill every month, whether they know it or not, for flush tax, $7.50. I think the governor wants to raise it again. You know, we're paying a lot. We're paying federal taxes for the EPA to clean up this bag. So we gotta make a decision. That's the first thing. Make a decision. Do we want a clean bag? And then if the light gets a little clearer on what we need to do. If we're gonna if the decision's yes. And there's some things that should be done, and some things that are a matter of fairness. For instance, on the left side of Carpenter Point Road is a property that's uh, NAR, zoned NAR. The property owner is getting forest conservation tax credit as we speak. This law talks about conservation as Tier 4. What do we have it? We have it as Tier 2 and Tier 3. That's a critical property that's right next to the bay. So that's what I'm, I'm talking about. You have to make your decisions on, on what you're going to do. And some of these other properties that maybe, I would do look at it from a priority standpoint. If it's next to a waterway, a stream, that is more priority. Now, if somebody's being down zoned, I'm for the Constitution. I'm very strong with the Constitution. They have to be compensated. So the goal is to find a way of compensating them, but maybe we don't have to do everything, but we've got to look at what's going to give us the most bang for the buck. And that's going to be the ones that have direct impact to the waterway. And uh, it's going to create the biggest buffers for us to create a cleaner waterway. And in reference to some of the other speakers with the Susquehanna River, Understand that 60% of the fresh water inflow into the bay comes down that Susquehanna. So all the sediment, now Susquehanna River starts at the lake across from uh, Cooperstown, New York. Comes all the way, goes back to New York, comes down to Pennsylvania, West Branch. A huge watershed is draining. All those pollutants are coming down right at <coughs> Conowingo Dam. There's all kinds of sediments in there. I remember being in college in 1978, TMI struck. There could be radioactive sediments in there. There's all kinds of sediments. So we talk about cleaning up, we got to be careful because we may stir up sediments <coughs> that have radioactivity in them. So we're going to have to be careful with that cleanup. But yes, the Susquehanna River is a major contributor. But if we're going to be 
responsible as a county and say we're going to clean up the bay and do things that is positive for the bay, then we got to do things locally if we want local control, not for local control, but we have to act responsibly in the county and not say we want to develop the whole county. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Diane Carabetta. Good evening. Diane Carabetta, 1611 Carpenters Point Road, Perryville, Maryland. While well, Senate Bill, I'm, I'm against uh, Senate Bill 236. While well, Senate Bill 236 may be something that Montgomery County, PG County, and Baltimore City enjoy and benefit from, the impact on rural Cecil County um, is less than ideal. However, Cecil County is fighting the battle against 236 on more than one front. While farmers had a tractor brigade and citizens were outspoken about Senate Bill 236, our very own MACO representative, then County Commissioner Terry Moore, now County Executive Terry Moore, wanted a seat at the table, so she spoke in favor of Senate Bill 236 with amendments during a hearing in Annapolis in her position on the Board of Directors of MACO. Meanwhile, Jim Mullen was there, who was then our President of Cecil County, Commissioners with a letter from all county, all five county commissioners against it. Sadly, this sounds very familiar as Ms. Moore ran as a Republican in order to get the county seat at the table and then abandoned her party to name her own replacement on the council. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. We look to our leaders to observe continuity of words and actions. Yet we realize that actions and deeds speak far louder than words. I'm struggling to get my arms around the repeated actions, deeds, and behaviors demonstrated by Ms. Moore. Mrs. Carabetta, would you yes, please sir. direct your attention to the tier maps? We're not talking about elected officials, talking about tier maps. Right, and I am talking about Senate Bill 236. Thank you and happy birthday, uh, Councilman Hodge. While well, failing to see how the city at the legislative meeting in Annapolis supporting 236 with amendments helps protect our farmers and Cecil County property rights. In fact, it's my understanding that one of the unintended consequences of the in favor with amendments position resulted in downzoning to Cecil County farms in the Northern Agricultural District from one to house per 10 acres, which is in our current planning and zoning, to one house to 20 acres for residential dwellings. Why wasn't our MACO representative fighting to protect current density? Why didn't she testify in Annapolis on the recent bills, House Bill 106, House Bill 252, or Senate Bill 391, as County Councilwoman Rumal did, and as uh, the Campaign for Liberty said? I failed to see how sending her own map that was sorely lacking in detail protected the property rights of our citizens. Now in a redo, Ms. Moore wants to make sure that our map is consistent with her comprehensive plan. Let's hope that she can work with the county council and actually come up with something that works for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Rod Hines. Hello, I'm Rod. <coughs> I'm Rod Hines, I'm the town administrator in Port Deposit, and I will make you the same promise that Brittany Spears made her first husband. Don't worry, I won't keep you long. <laughs> President Hodge and other council members, uh, County Executive Moore, Al Wine, and all his staff, uh, we appreciate what you do and you have always supported us, which we appreciate. We're here to support uh, you and your endeavor on this project because this is not an easy thing to do. Port Deposit, like all communities, is trying to develop their town the best way they can. We have uh, several assets. We are right on the Susquehanna River. <coughs> Pretty low uh, elevation, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and being right next to the river has its own uh, challenges, as I well know. We are trying to develop up the hill a little bit near Bainbridge someday. 
<laughs> it's slow going, but it's coming, I think. Anyway, uh, Mayor Tome asked me today to impress upon the council ever so firmly and politely, I threw that part in, <laughs> that we are asking you not to restrict the area around Bainbridge to keep us from developing the area up the hill because that is all we have up there. We're a small community and we need all the help you can give us and if you could do that much for us we would appreciate it. Thank you. Next speaker is Mel Dawson. Would you repeat that? Tim and Janelle Dawson. Are the Dawson still here? Next speaker. Terry Cummings. Good evening, County Executive members of the County Council. My name is Terry Cummings. I'm with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation from Annapolis. I appreciate this opportunity to speak with you about the tier map before you. <coughs> Excuse me. I am here on behalf of our 200,000 members, 450 of which reside in Cecil County. We have submitted our written comments electronically, but I have paper copies here for you as well. I'll just pass these out now. Thank you. Uh, and these are very detailed comments, and I'm not going to go into um, uh, the detail of the comments, but I'm going to summarize uh, our comments here this evening. Cecil County has worked hard in the past to reserve farmland for us in open space, and we believe firmly that the county can meet the objective of SB 236. A good map that's, that meets state law is very important for clean water in Cecil County and the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay and many local rivers and streams are so polluted that they are on the impaired waters list, the EPA's impaired waters list, as was uh, stated by a number of folks uh, earlier, including the Bohemian River, uh, Northeast Sassafras, Susquehanna, Elk, and others. Uh, the septics bill and the tier maps are a critical part of Maryland's strategy to meet the TMDL and the State Watershed Implementation Plan restoration goals. We also recognize that the council must, must address the concerns of landowners. However, we believe those concerns are not supported by the facts based on prior research during the drafting of SB 236. CBF, uh, excuse me, in addition, we are certain that the state will work, that the state will work with the county to address these concerns uh, as the state did with Frederick County. And CBF, my organization, is also committed to work with the counties, county officials, to address these concerns and get the necessary facts out to the public to help the council develop a map that meets the spirit and the intent of the law and will gar garner a majority vote from the council. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Drew Schmidt Perkins. Good evening, I appreciate your patience this evening. I'm Drew Schmidt Perkins, Executive Director of Thousand Friends of Maryland uh, from Baltimore. Um, often while well, I'm getting ready uh, in the morning, I hear this wonderful ad paid by the taxpayers of this uh, county about the beautiful resources that you have, the parks, the rural lands, and I want you to keep that ad running and keep it true. Um, much has been discussed today about the role of the state, and I want to point out that the state does have a critical responsibility here, um, and that's to look at the cumulative impacts about what each of us are doing individually, each county, each, each municipality, and to devise solutions when problems have been identified. For example, uh, it became clear that under current development patterns in the state, we're going to lose over 400,000 acres of rural lands to development at huge cost to the state. 
three points. <coughs> Losing 400,000 acres of rural land will decimate the important agricultural economy of the state from the very people that you heard speak before us and others all across the state. Equally important, our rural land is generating further money through hunting, fishing, kayaking, all <coughs> those others um, of the eco economy, which is critical to the state. Millions and millions of dollars are at risk. Second, paving over rural areas requires a lot of money. New roads, new schools, new parking lots, the transportation fund, as we're all too aware in the state, is stretched thin and shows no sign of being re, uh, rebuilt with anybody's gas tax tolls or anything else these days. So how would we fund those improvements? How would we fund more roads, more maintenance, more bridges? Three, one thing we learned during the very, very extensive task force on septics that met about every two weeks for the entire summer, well through the fall, very, very, very hardworking group, was that a house on well and septic pollutes 10 times more than a house on water and sewer. 10 times. A pollutant load that this state can't afford. A pollutant load that in this state is increasing when everybody else is working hard to decrease those. We simply can't do it. And yes, septic systems do pollute nitrogen. They're very good at, at cleaning up the bacterial load. They're really, really poor at cleaning up nitrogen. Just two more quick points. I live in Baltimore City. I can tell you we're doing our part at great cost to us in the city to clean up the pollutant loads that we are causing. My, do my tax dollars are going up every year to fund the fixing the pipes, the stormwater, various other things. So we're in this game. Um, as well, as is every sector in the state, as it should be. And finally, I do want to address property rights. Um, yes, we do have um, our property rights protected in the Constitution, and that's incredibly important. At the same time, we're part of a civil society, of a community, which is equally important. And this country has found a way to balance the individual property rights and the community rights. And a simple example comes when you think about your car trips, those long car trips with your siblings in the back seat. And I remember with my two brothers, later three brothers, sitting in the back seat. And I had my property right of my finger. And my finger was my right until it poked my brother. At which point, the law of my parents came down, often with, do I have to stop the car? Um, and I would get in hot water or my brother <coughs> in trouble when he poked me. So we do have our property rights, but it stops at the border with your property. It stops at the border with the community. And every day we obey laws that set this balance. I would love at great um, fear of the person who I drove with to drive home at 120 miles an hour in my brand new car because it would be fun but there's a speed limit that's imposed for the safety of all. I would love to keep my library books out for six months, but I can't. I have to share them with the community. I would love to not have to obey other laws. We have laws for fire, for safety, for going to school, and this is part of a community. So property rights are balanced with the rights of the community for the strength of all of us. So, so for the future of this county, for the whole state, we urge you to find an effective map that supports both the conflict and our future. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Arnold Stan, uh, 412 Lightfoot Drive, down in town, Pennsylvania. I grew up in Elk Neck, and uh, we have family that lives there right now. And unfortunately, I did not receive the letter that was sent out talking about the 27 August um, um, follow-up meeting. It was a few days later. I got the letter after the, uh, the meeting, so I was unable to attend. So I'm coming from behind, and I just have a question that I would like to ask. We have a 13-acre 
wooded property, which according to the state map is classified as tier four. And I have a very basic question because I have a little difficulty as a lay person understanding the descriptions for tier four that were provided. And my question is this, would I be able to sell this property to another person if I desire to, and that person could uh, build a home on that property provided it met the county requirements. Can you want to answer that question for me? We can't respond to your questions tonight, but we will contact you uh, tomorrow if you would uh, give us your contact information. I'm curious why they... Because this is not a question and answer period. This is for only comments tonight. I would submit then that I would like to have some opportunity to potentially sell that piece of property to someone if I so desire in the future or have the opportunity to provide it to someone in my family if I desire in the future. And hence, uh, if I understood things correctly, what tier four says, I would not be able to do that because it talks about a 20 acre minimum. So hence, that would be unfair to me as a homeowner. Uh, secondly, I feel that uh, there is an infringement upon my uh, property rights as a person who owns undeveloped property, and I feel that there, this needs to be handled at the local no level, not at the uh, state level. And as I understand, in the writing of description for Tier 4, it says that it is state-mandated as to handling approval on that. And 